Once you've built the validator cache, we need to look about how we might deploy these. Now, with one validator cache available for the entire network, the routers end up speaking just to the one cache. If that cache goes away, the routers no longer have a means to check the validation of prefixes. So our advice would be to deploy at least two validator caches. You won't want to put these in the same equipment rack. You won't want them in the same point of presence. It'd be much better to have them geographically, diversely located in different cities, different towns, depending on the extent of your network. Also, consider two different validator cache implementations, because this gives software independence. With just one implementation, you end up being tied to the foibles or the bugs of that particular implementation. And probably the easy way of doing this is to implement on a Linux container so that the container can be moved between different server clusters as required. And given the internet today is migrating to dual stack operation, where we're using both IPv4 and IPv6, I would advise to configure the validator to listen on both IPv4 and IPv6, and then configure the routers that need it with both IPv4 and IPv6 validator connections. So in the case of IPv4 breaking, you still have validation information over IPv6 and vice versa. Another common question is about how we secure the validator. And that's best achieved by only permitting the routers running eBGP to have access to the validators. Otherwise, the standard rules of securing small containers or services would apply. Thank you.